I'm back. This is your next homework assignment, really. Uh, the name of this particular programming today is called The Time is Near, Repent, and Don't Do It Again. Get your pencils and paper handy because you're going to be going to the Bible a lot here. I'll read a few things to you, but the rest you're going to look up yourself because it's homework. Now, I've given you this verse before a number of times. Uh, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. You will find that in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. Don't mess around and mess up your uh, prayers now. You may not even listen to you. God made one manner of law for everyone. Any transgression of the law is a sin. God did allow man to make New laws, but they weren't supposed to be in contradiction or uh, conflict with his laws. Well, that's not the case. Man-made laws are interrelated and interconnected to God's laws, but man-made laws have a tendency to trick us, seduce us, whatever word you want to use, into breaking God's laws. Now go to Leviticus chapter 22, chapter 24, verse 22, and you will find where God made the manner of law for everyone. And the laws were made for the lawless, those that were unrighteous. God had to teach you. You may not have known that this was unrighteous. But once God had given this to man and it is understood, uh, it was law and you have sinned if you break it. You will find this in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. We are at war and a lot of people don't realize that we're at war with good and evil. It's always been that way. Even the war that's over there where we've gotten involved in, over there in that area where Jerusalem is, Iraq, Iran, all that stuff over there, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Syria, you know, we all over in that area, we got some issues with those people for one reason or another. And I assure you, if you pinpoint where it come from, and with all the deaths that's occurring, Satan is definitely up in there somewhere. The devil. He is the god of death. Now, this is another verse I want you to listen to, and I'll give, it, give you uh, where to find it. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You'll find this in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. That's the real fight we are fighting. And... It's not against flesh, even though flesh may be guided by an evil spirit. It's not the fight against flesh. It's the flesh against those spirits. Ephesians 6.12 uh, As I said, you have a flesh body and we can be influenced by both uh, unclean spirits because we have a spirit as well. Now, Let's talk a little bit about the works of the flesh. Clean spirits use our bodies to do holy stuff. Unclean spirits 
use our bodies to do evil stuff. And let me give you what the works of the flesh are. You'll find this in Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 through 21. You must put on your whole armor. I did a, a show on that, a whole thing on uh, that, about an hour, half hour, whatever, on your armor. And uh, you must put on your whole armor, you know, in order to fight. And, uh, you know, the evil spirits are the fiery darts, as sometimes it's called. If you lose your armor, you lose your armor through sin. Now, I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Each of your parts of your armor have protective powers. That's in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, as well as, in fact, Go through Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, 12, and 13 through 17. Just read Ephesians chapter 6. Because sometimes it requires you to read a few verses before, a few verses after, uh, in order to fully understand. But, uh... We will talk about the armor. You'll find that in Ephesians. Now, I'm doing a series on idolatry right now. And the major laws that are being broken even today is idolatry and fornication. Fornication is covered under the seventh commandment. The seventh commandment covers all sexual sins. The seventh commandment is thou shall not commit adultery. A lot of people think that that's the only thing that that commandment covers. But there are precepts beneath that commandment that covers all sexual sins. Now we have upper level demons and lower level demons. The upper level demons rule the lower level demons. They don't usually come out until it's uh, some something big. You know, what they'll do is send a whole bunch of lower level demons, which are unclean spirits, to attack you. Just keep in mind, uh, there are deadly sins. Sins that will lead to your death. These sins that lead to your death may not initially be uh, death penalty sins, but it's going to lead to you doing death penalty sins. It's going to seduce you into doing it because that's how uh, Satan works. And I'm, I did a series on... Uh, uh, I call unnatural disasters where I tried to show how we work with unclean spirits associated with earth, wind, fire, and water. Those are the powers that God has given clean spirits as well as unclean spirits. We have a tendency to listen to the unclean spirits and the next thing you know we have disasters that are associated with earth, wind, fire, and water. Now, I covered uh, as much as I could in that series on how we work with unclean spirits. We work with unclean spirits by doing wrong. The taxpayers spend billions of dollars a year and they expect 
certain things to be taken care of, such as dams, levees, reservoirs, greenery that's no longer green as dead plants need to be cut down to prevent fires. When we work with unclean spirits, we help cause a lot of the disasters we have. So that's why I call it unnatural disasters. God is not going to be involved in any disaster like that. Because death occurred. There's some demon, devil, and stuff in there somewhere. You have to uh, find out. I tell people, follow the money. Because if some money was supposed to be spent on a dam or a levee or a reservoir and it has not been spent properly, that's what causes disasters. See, all it needs is just a little crack to get through that you didn't repair. And it wreaks havoc. So I'm going to close this session by saying abstain from all appearance of evil. You will find this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22. It says abstain from all appearance of evil. You may not be absolutely positive, but something is not quite right. It appears to be evil. You don't have the proof in front of you, but you, you got that gut feeling. Then that gut feeling is probably coming from a Holy Spirit, a clean spirit that's telling you to leave that alone. So abstain from all appearance of evil. Don't hang around evil people. You know when it comes out of their mouth it was evil. You got to get away from them. Because they are inviting unclean spirits to attack you as well. That's how it works, people. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. Until we meet again, I love you.